Good afternoon and welcome to today's session on Director Special, Owner's Guide on Cybersecurity and Thumb Rules of IT Investment. I am Aditi, co-host of the event today. Let me introduce today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah, CEO and co-founder of Synersoft Technologies. He is known as a seasoned technology stalwart, an inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, and most importantly, a go-to guy for the MSNEs. This webinar is specially designed for enterprise owners and senior IT professionals. In this session, Vishal Sar will share his insights on a simplified understanding of cybersecurity and can also validate your past and future IT investments. Vishal Sar will share his expertise on optimizing investments, ensuring you don't overspend on the wrong avenues, and more importantly, don't underspend where it matters. During this session, topics of discussion will be don't overthink cybersecurity. Don't overspend on IT infrastructure. How to strategically plan and allocate resources for IT infrastructure and services, followed by examples and a Q&A session at the end of the event. If you have any questions while you attend this session, kindly write in the Q&A tab at the bottom of your Zoom login. He will take up the questions at the end of the session. Alternatively, in case you want to ask any question at the end of the session, you may please raise your hand and we shall activate your microphone to ask the question. Vishal sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Yeah, thank you Aditi for the introduction and welcome all uh, to this uh, director special webinar. This is uh, by the courtesy of United SMEs funded by Synersoft Technologies. We are organizing such knowledge sharing uh, webinars. So let me um, narrate what is the takeaway from this particular webinar. Over past two, three years, uh, I have met so many enterprise owners and I have, I have absorbed certain inputs from them. And I have found that, you know, they are too much overthinking about cybersecurity. Maybe there are valid reasons. They are uh, too much overspending on IT. Maybe there are reasons. So I thought that let me come up with this particular uh, kind of subject where it is designed for enterprise owners, those who lead the organization in their own business. At the same time, cybersecurity or IT becomes very integral part of their business and they have to make certain decisions about cybersecurity and IT investment also. Why cybersecurity? So in past two, three years, uh, decision-making by enterprise owners pertaining to cybersecurity has reason, has, has uh, gone up very much. And the reason is that uh, either they have uh, suffered some data loss or they have suffered some data theft, or maybe they are applying for an empanelment as a vendor to large enterprise or, or an overseas customer. And that customer insists that their vendor should have certain cybersecurity compliances. So this has made them think about cybersecurity. This has made them getting ready for the investment in cybersecurity. So I think this is the right time to have this kind of discourse so that people can take informed decision and they don't end up overthinking or overspending on it. Um, another thing is why uh, thumb rules of IT investment is very important and very relevant topic right now. It is because uh, everything is getting digitized. Every enterprise owner has to invest in digitalization. And digitalization leads to data dependency. It means everything gets digital. Everything transforms in a digital data. And organization relies on that particular data for its business continuity, for its competitiveness, for its operational efficiencies. And at that time, in order to have standard IT systems so that this digital data is well in place, very well utilized and very well protected, there are investment decisions required to be made by enterprise owners. And that is why we think that if they know about thumb rules of IT investment, it would really help them take the informed decision. So this is the agenda for today. I'm going to uh, help you with understanding of the cybersecurity, not on technical matters but with a perspective of an enterprise owner 
we should know to what thing we should give how much importance and how much serious we should be about uh, we should not be overthinking about something at the same time we should not be ignoring something also so i'm going to take up all those things uh, in today's session so before we move to the next part i request everyone to participate in a poll i request ali to launch the poll just to get to know about the profile of the attendees Uh, please ignore the third option. I think uh, it is out of mistake. So as we see that uh, around 40% are the owners, 55% are sitting in a key position uh, which requires them to handle the large enterprise data for whom cybersecurity and IT investment is important and 31% are IT vendors or system integrators. Thank you, Aditi. So now uh, let us... Uh, uh, start with the first point, how to deal with cybersecurity with an owner's perspective, with an entrepreneur's perspective. So basically, why every enterprise owner is supposed to think about cybersecurity? Why is it part of his or her to-do list You know about cybersecurity? The first thing is, it is because global standards of competition. In order to compete on global standards, enterprises have to adopt digitization and they have to have mandatorily adopt information technology, which leads them to dependence on the digital assets. So when they depend on digital assets, they have to protect those digital assets from loss, leakage and theft. They should have their IT systems in a very standard, standard form. That is where the questions of affordability, questions of complexity, and questions of unavailability, I'll tell you what do we mean by unavailability comes. So when an organization depends on digital data and it wants to protect, many a times they realize that cybersecurity is very expensive. It is an endless expenditure. And affordability is a major concern as far as cybersecurity is concerned. Complexity, most of these people, enterprise owners, don't understand cybersecurity. It makes it more complex. And for them to make the decision, it is even more difficult for them. And in order to make such a decision, they need a help. And that help is really talented cybersecurity professionals. And these cybersecurity professionals are not easily available to smaller organizations. So unavailability, so it's a kind of fix. The global competition wants them, the global competition wants them to adopt technology, wants them to depend on digital, uh, uh, digital data. At the same time, availability of highly talented cybersecurity professional is not easily available to smaller organizations. They cannot afford them also. They find all these concepts very complex and hence, on one hand, you don't have talent to help you out. And on another hand, you are compelled to make a decision. So this is something which has forced everyone to think about cybersecurity. And that is where um, we are going to talk about how or how is it a perspective of an owner towards cybersecurity so that he does not end up overthinking about it. He does not end up ignoring it also. 
So before we move to the next part, after understanding why cybersecurity, why thinking about cybersecurity is very, very important and there is no option. It is not an option not to think about cybersecurity. We'll move to the next part. I request Aditi to launch the poll, please. So the question of the poll is, what is your challenge towards cybersecurity? 41% um, have answered that it is too complex to understand. 41% it is too expensive to deploy. 41% the talent to deploy effective cybersecurity is out of reach. And 48% it is never ending expense. So now, uh, Having this kind of perception about cybersecurity, let us understand in very, very realistic manner whether it is it deserves this much of attention or whether it deserves this kind of this kind of stress or tension it gives to the enterprise owners who think that their business continuity could be at stake or their competitiveness could be at stake if they don't take care of standard uh, cyber security. So let us first derive an approach that, so cyber security means different for different type of organizations. So I have divided all business enterprises in four different categories. One is consumer-oriented organizations, community-oriented organizations, social networks, like Facebook, Amazon, LinkedIn kind of organizations, or some very large e-commerce websites like Flipkart. So these are one type of organizations who could be the victim of cyber crime and that is why we are thinking about cyber security another type of organizations are very large enterprises or government organizations like tata reliance lnt government of india third type of enterprises are smes are smes who have digitized themselves and fourth type of enterprises are old generation SMEs who have not yet digitized themselves. They are still uh, working on paper and they don't have adopt, they have not adopted IT or ERP or something like that. So these are entire industry which consumes information technology are divided in four different parts. I'm having a perspective of a business, not as an individual. And we have made a matrix. On one side, we have kept talent availability and resource deployment required for cybersecurity. And another matrix is risk and financial impact of a successful cyber crime. So it talks about, you know, you will deploy the resources against the cyber crime for cybersecurity if it impacts you significantly. So when we talk about the first type of organizations who are consumer-oriented organizations, community, social networks like Facebook, banks, so many, 
these people have good talent to protect themselves against cyber crime and they have a low risk of a impact of cyber crime i'll give you an example let's say it's a facebook let's say some consumer of facebook his or her account is hacked and let's say some fraud has happened then the magnitude of that particular fraud would be specific to that particular consumer or individual it won't be in billions at an enterprise level but yes they have large number of consumers and there is a brand perception on what kind of cyber security they have so they have good very well designed cyber security systems talent to design that particular cyber security system and then they invest in the resource also for the cyber security another type of organizations where large enterprises government the impact of financial impact and risk is of course high and they also have talent availability and resource deployment for cyber security also high very logical like any bank it will have very high impact on risk or financial impact so it will have to deploy good resources state of the art cyber security systems and for which whatever talent it requires it is available to them and it is affordable to them the third type of sme is an old generation sme who has not even digitized so he will not be the victim of cyber security his data is not there in the system so again somebody wants to hack in or somebody wants to do something online they cannot do it because everything is done uh, on paper they write checks they don't use net banking these are old generation msme so for them availability of the talent is low and risk is also low now we are talking about smes now these smes are actually in a fix their risk and financial impact of cyber security cyber crime is high on them at the same time they don't have talent availability and resource deployment for cyber security adequate enough so yes they don't have availability of the talent at the same time the impact is very high on the msmes so they have to take it seriously the other people also take it very seriously but they have enough ammunition against the protection against the cyber criminals and they have good protection practices old generation msmes are indifferent to that so this is about the first logic why cyber security is important for msme whether to overthink or not now we will understand in next two slides now i am putting the same people in another on another matrix like consumer oriented communities social networks large enterprises or government ignorant msmes i am talking about ignorant msmes who are not so much digitized and proactive msmes so here here i have shifted some of the i have reshuffled the types of these organizations on a different matrix one let's say we are now sitting on the other side of the bench let's take a perspective of a cyber criminal okay so let's say a cyber criminal is identifying the target to attack someone so he will have two parameters to decide on that particular target one what good is he is getting from committing that cyber attack external hacker what good is you know let's say he attacks government of india and gets aadhar law of goody and what kind of criminal effort is required to commit that cyber crime in order to get those goodies so when we talk about consumer oriented communities or social networks the goodies they get by attacking facebook or by attacking linkedin they get law of goodies and they don't have to 
put in a lot of efforts because ultimately they are attacking the consumer of that Facebook. So they are attacking the user or member of the Facebook who is just a layman like us, so who can be easily attacked. And if they attack so many of us, they get good so much of goodies at the same time they will require minimum cyber crime eff, uh, uh, effort because they are attacking the ignorant people another is large enterprise when they attack them there will be lot of goodies but at the same time large enterprises will have adequate protection so they will have to invest in more criminal efforts third one is Ignorant SME means who doesn't have anything, uh, he is just on his own. In that case, even if they attack that particular MSME, the goodies would be low, very low. You know, what would a hacker, international hacker, what would he do by attacking some small engineering company in Pune? What goodies he is getting? No, he's not getting much of the goodie. And because that particular MSME is, is not well protected, has not invested in cybersecurity, he will he will not have to put in a lot of efforts. On the other side, when there is a proactive MSME who has done something in cybersecurity, who has done something in cybersecurity, the criminal efforts required to attack that particular proactive MSME will be high. At the same time, the goodies will be low. The goodies will be low. So, when we talk about large enterprises or government, there is a lot of juice when cybercrime happens for the hacker. And there is a lot of defense. So, hacker does not get that very easily. When there is a small organization which has not done anything in cybersecurity, Hacker is not really interested in hacking him, but at the same time, he will require very low effort. So he would rather go for it like some ransomware and then he might get some money. But when there is a proactive MSME who has done something for the cybersecurity, we'll see what. Then effort required by the hacker will be more and the goodies will not be in proportion to those efforts. Goodies will not be in proportion to the effort. So these two metrics, I want to make a point and we will see what point I want to make. So one thing is that because of unavailability of the talent, MSMEs are vulnerable and because there are less goodies, hackers may not be motivated to target or focus on the MSMEs, certain types of MSMEs. They would be interested in having ignorant MSMEs in their target, get their data logged by a ransomware and then ask for the ransom. But at the same time, a proactive MSME, if he has done something and if he is making it slightly difficult for a hacker and he, if hacker has to put in more efforts, most of these hackers use autobots. So those autobots, you know, just try to scan something. If they don't find anything, they move on to another target. So if MSME, proactive MSME has done that thing. The hacker will not put in a lot of efforts to get whatever small thing goodies he's going to get. So the logic is when it is a large enterprise, when there is a large enterprise, the defense strategies would be like this. And when there is a small enterprise, the defense strategies should be like this. So when we overthink about cybersecurity, we overinvest, we end up on this kind of defense strategy, which is on the left side of the screen, which we really don't require. But yes, if we have small enough and effective cybersecurity strategy, very focused, then we don't overspend. At the same time, the hacker will have, put, have to put in more effort, which he will skip us and he will move to somebody who is more vulnerable. And that is where I always give a metaphor of rasgulla and nuts. So when you want to eat nut, you have to really put in a lot of efforts. You should have very strong teeth. You should have very strong jaw. And then only you can actually get what is in the core of the nut. At the same time, it is a rasgulla. You can easily eat it and enjoy it. So as an MSME, when you want to make a decision about how much 
and to what extent you would like to invest in cyber security. You have to aim to become a nut, not a rasgulla. So when I come, I go back to the another, I mean, same slide. So proactive MSME is like a nut. You know, it can still be broken, but it requires a lot of efforts. And probably the what what we get from the nut is not is not worth putting in a lot of efforts. And the ignorant MSMEs are like Rasgulla, they have not done anything. So anything will happen to them. And at least their business will be uh, will be will be at halt. They will lose business continue. They will lose competitiveness. So we don't have to really overthink about um, uh, about we don't have to really overthink about cybersecurity and plan this kind of investment. We have to plan this kind of investment. So this is the metaphor. This is the metaphor. You know, as an MSME, I don't have to have equivalent system what an HDFC bank or ICICI bank will have. At the same time, as an MSME, I should know what I want to protect and I should know how I will protect, how much I will put in. We are going to discuss all that now. And that is how if we become that small nut, you know, the hacker or external guy will not attack us because he will have more rasgullas on his table and he will not put in any efforts on us. So this is about the first conceptual understanding how you view cyber security as a decision how much you want to how much bandwidth it should take from your own um, from, from from your own resources so this is how um, i wanted to explain this particular metaphor so before we move to the next part i request aditi to launch the poll please So mostly we want to uh, we want to provide for cybersecurity because of compliance challenges. So we had put up this question: What is found the most challenging? So seventy nine percent think that cybersecurity compliance is challenging. Thirty nine percent IT audit by customers, and twenty five percent mandatory vendor empanelment compliance by government or large enterprises. Okay, so now. Uh, let us, having understood what kind of attention we want to give to cybersecurity, let us understand how we can take it. And believe me, uh, it, it it does not at all, uh, you know, cost bomb. You know, it is very simple. And I'm going to put my VR safe formula. And if you follow that, uh, you will definitely become that tough nut, you know which is difficult to crack and you are not going to be the victim of cybersecurity breach. So now let us first understand what are the cyber crime targets inside your information technology systems. Okay. So first is your digital asset, which is your data. It could be your ERP data, design, drawing, Excel, cost sheets, agreements, whatever. Another cybercrime target could be your communication, which is email system. And another cybercrime target is the resource you use the most is internet connectivity. Now we use internet for filing our returns, for researching, for business development, for banking, for entering financial transactions, for KYC, everything. So cyber criminals 
if they have to attack any enterprise, either they will attack the data, which is very clear ransomware, or they will attack the email system. We'll understand what how email systems can be attacked and what kind of um, identity theft it can really lead to. And or they can attack your internet usage and they can try to victimize you. So these are the cyber crime targets. Either they can target you on your data, they can target you on your email system, or they can target you on the internet connectivity. Now we are breaking up. We want to understand how much attention we want to pay to cyber security. Now we are breaking it up, you know, like uh, data, we have to focus on our data, we have to focus on our email system, and we have to focus on our internet connectivity. Now, first thing first, you know, what could be the potential cyber crime on the data? So, as I told, data means digital assets, ERP data, account data, design, drawing, cost sheet, contract, customer data. Now, every thread has two types. One is external type and another is insider type. Means your data, anything which is happening to the data is something related to cyber security. So, if your data is targeted by an external threat, it could be a ransomware, malware, or virus infection. If it is an insider threat, means your own people also can target your data. And that is also a cyber crime. Okay. They might manipulate your data, they might delete your data, or they might leak your data for competitive purpose, either to leak your tender bid or maybe take your data and get a better job. So your data can be targeted from external people in terms of or in the form of ransomware, malware, or virus infection. It can be for the insider. It can be targeted by an insider of the organization in terms of manipulation. They might manipulate the data. They might delete the data or they might um, leak the data. So this is the potential cyber crime on your data, which is a digital asset. Now coming to another part. First, we are understanding how potentially your email system can also be targeted. So email communication means your commitments, your disputes, your negotiations, confidential data exchange, everything. Again, external threat, insider threat. External threat means there might be an identity theft crime, you know, identity theft. Or they might, there might be a ransomware backdoor. Email could be a channel to infiltrate a ransomware from the backdoor and it might attack your data. So your email system from the external people can be attacked in the form of identity theft. We'll understand what it is. And in the form of ransomware backdoor. Insider, of course, email system can be misused to leak your data for competitive purpose. And that could be an insider threat that is also a cyber crime. If I leak the confidential data of the organization, I am a cyber criminal. So now, having understood that potential cyber crime through emails, let us understand potential uh, identity theft. So we have faced this so many times. Like we get an email from Netflix that, uh, you know, your account is not uh, renewed. Please click on this link, make the payment or renew it. Or maybe sometimes uh, you get uh, some email that uh, your uh, parcel has arrived and you know you need to give some OTP and all that. Or maybe that particular, so these are all examples. Uh, or it could be, you know, your account is blocked, you have to click here, change your password, whatever, or your insurance has expired and you need to renew your policy. And these are all spammers or hackers, you know, you send the emails. They uh, that is called identity theft. It means they steal the identity of the person or the organization with whom you are normally and commonly transacting. And when you uh, you are unsuspected because uh, if the email comes from Netflix and you are the customer of Netflix, you might just uh, you might just fall prey to that. So this is what identity theft, where somebody sends you an email whom you know 
but that somebody is not actually that somebody he has already stolen the identity of the original somebody become another somebody and then they have sent an email that please send in paisa in some account or please send payment in this account or bank account has changed we have all faced it so one way how email systems can be abused to commit a cyber crime is identity theft and these are the examples of the cyber crime i'm just putting those things on the screen so this is identity theft one other way email can be abused for committing cyber crime is data leakage through email your own insider might leak your data now potential cyber crime or internet it is used as a professional excellence for the professional excellence you need internet for compliance you need internet for everything you need internet nowadays so phishing means let's say you um, want to open your website hdfc bank website and let's say it directs to some other website and it looks like the same as hdfc website and you enter your username and password and otp and everything and then you are becoming the for a uh, victim of the fraud or again this internet can also act as a channel to infiltrate the ransomware from the back door again your own insiders can also leak the data or internet. They might take entire your designs uh, and upload it on Google Drive and take it away. So again, cybercrime through internet happens by the external people in terms of phishing and ransomware backdoor, or the insider people or internal people by term, by leakage. Now we'll understand what do we mean by phishing. So I have uh, handpicked this particular uh, this particular real life example. I'll tell you, uh, it is on 12th February 2018, if you see the screenshot time, uh, Bank of India website was looking like this. Fake addresses and phone numbers of Bank of Branches created by miscreant on Google search. So it is like, you know, we read in the uh, newspaper, na, somewhere there is a fake, there was a fake police station, you know, there was a building in which police were uh, sitting, but they were not the actual police. Similarly, on the internet, somebody had done this for bank uh, against bank of india they had made same website for bank of india but it was not the bank of india we uns the unsuspected people might enter username password otp everything they get it and then they just take the do the transaction so uh, this is this is what it is now i will explain how you can take care of this kind of situation and how you don't become victim of that so for that purpose i have uh, uh, see, uh, I have derived something. So see this. Uh, when on 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 twelfth February two thousand eighteen, when when I opened Bank of India website, it was looking like this. Bank of India. I think Bank of India website looks like this right now also. Okay. Now, but this is a fake website, and how you determine that it was a fake website? So I have derived a a method which can be practiced by a. 15 year old 14 year old child also we'll see that so let's say if i open this website uh, first of all let me highlight this uh, here bank of india dot star connect with something 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 when i open this when i open any website and when i, when I want to find out uh, whether it is a genuine website or not what i should do is first of all i have to see this particular url I have to see this particular URL. This is a wrong URL. This is Bank of India dot Star Connect, uh, Star Connect CBSI, Central Banking System Information uh, dot com. This is a wrong URL. And how do you find out it is a wrong URL? Let's see. This is a right URL. Star Connect CBA, uh, CBS dot Bank of India dot com. This is a right URL. And how you determine it? So now let's say. So from the left to right, find the third slash. So this is the first slash. This is a second slash. And this is the third slash where arrow is pointing. Okay. So from left to right, find the third slash. And from right to left, find the first dot. So now this, this is the slash. So this is the first dot. First point I've written here. First point. It must provide, it must be the provider's domain. And if it is 
a domain like .co.in or .gov.in, then you should look for the second dot. Here it is .com, so first dot. If it is co.in something, then second dot. There, it has to be Bank of India. It cannot be something else. It has to be Bank of India. Now we will see that wrong one. Just check. Third slash, which is here. First dot, which is here. Before the first dot, what is it? Star connect, CBSI. So this is a wrong URL. In the right URL, yes, you have first uh, third slash here, first dot, and then Bank of India. So Bank of India is the right URL. So this is how you can avoid yourself being victimized of a phishing scam. And uh, as you know, cyber criminals get smarter and smarter, they just do it. So this is about, so this is about identity theft, phishing, ransomware, whatever we say. This is about this kind of frauds which can happen. Now, how we can make sure that with minimum investment, how we can get rid of all these possibilities and we are we become that particular tough nut, you know, which is difficult to crack, and that's why the cyber criminals will move on. So for that purpose, we have developed. Uh, a very good formula. We are safe. Very easy to remember. And if you follow that, uh, you will have done a lot of things about cybersecurity, which would make you that tough nut. And hackers will move to, uh, you know, a, a more vulnerable SMEs, not you. And we will see that. And before that, let me have your feedback on whatever uh, I have discussed, you know, uh, till this time. So, Aditi, can we launch the poll, please? Yeah. So uh, we are here with the results. You know, what, what, which threat according to you is more difficult to mitigate? So 69% believe that ransomware is difficult to mitigate. 50% uh, feel that, you know, the identity theft of the email is difficult, external threat. 50% phishing, uh, they take it as a difficult challenge. 54% find data deletion or manipulation of the insider threat is very difficult. 46% data leakage over email by employee insider threat is more difficult to mitigate. 65% feel that data leakage over internet by employee insider threat is more difficult to mitigate. And 54% data leakage over USB by employee insider threat is more difficult to mitigate. Thank you. So now we will derive a small formula. And if you follow that, you will definitely uh, deal with cybersecurity in more confident way, in more effective way. So we, that is what we call we are safe. We are safe. And I will tell you, I'll explain that in the next five minutes. What do we mean by we are safe? So we first is, we means VPN. Okay. So now after COVID, you know, um, most of the organizations have to provide for work from home or remote access to their users. We have, of course, come back to the office, but at the same time, now we have more and more users who are more mobile, who are 
who have gone to remote areas, they work from home, they work while traveling. So you need to give enterprise data access to the people who are accessing the data from outside in terms of software or whatever. So we for VPN have a rule, don't use Team Uber, any desk kind of things, this kind of free things, have VPN. So have good VPN set up in your organization. Anybody who wants to access your data from outside has to use VPN. If you do this, you will have very good control and you will have very good protection against those bots who are trying to find out which port is open for a remote desktop, which port is open for FTP, which port is open for something else like that. So have VPN access and you don't need to buy very expensive firewall for VPN. Any good router will have very good VPN facility. Any good router which is which is which costs 10, 10, 12,000 rupees, 10, 12,000 rupees, you know, you can have VPN uh, built in in that. So use VPN. Then, so have a static IP if you have on premise and use VPN. R, we are safe. R, R means router and the rule, rule table. So you will all have a router provided by your internet service provider. For I'm talking about smaller organizations. Or you have a low cost router which acts as a VPN. In that particular router, there is a there is a routing table, routing rules table. So accept VPN port, close everything else. Don't allow any communication on any port. Only open the VPN port. Have a good certificate on the VPN. Let your users connect your data through VPN only. When you have no ports, no other ports open, it is more difficult for the autobots to get into your network and affect you. So it will enhance your cyber security. Safe. What do we mean by S? Always use standard email system. You use standard email system like Google Workspace or MS365 or Zoho. Don't use very cheap email systems like in 5,000 rupees unlimited space, unlimited users. Don't use this kind of email system. They are not adequate. They might, uh, they might be, you know, um, um, backdoor to ransomware or they might be a very good, uh, they might be misused actually for the identity theft. So always use standard email system. So we are safe. We have covered VPN. R means routing table and router. Safe means, say S means standard email system. What do we mean by A? So here A for antivirus. Always have antivirus in your all the systems and keep it updated. It hardly costs 300 rupees, 400 rupees per year, hardly 25, 30 rupees per user per month. So don't cut the corners and don't avoid antivirus, always have antivirus. So this is A for antivirus. What do we mean by F? Forgo piracy, Forgo XP, 7, 8, kind of all the operating systems which are vulnerable. At least have Windows 10 or Windows 11 now. Always use genuine software. Though the cracks people use, you know, have a lot of malware and they might corrupt or contaminate your network environment. So, Forgo piracy is for F. And E for employee policies. Have just like you have HR policies for employees, you know, what kind of leaves they will get, what kind of uh, travel they will get as per their designation, rules, responsibilities. You should have what will be their rights in the IT, what will be their duties in the IT. So always have very good employee agreement with confidentiality, which covers employee to prohibit uh, leaking the data outside organization, deleting the data, uh, without permission, manipulating the data, everything should be legally covered. Of course, in India, enforcement of those legal terms are very difficult. But if the employee has signed something, he would be worried about it and have very clear cut employee policies as far as the IT is concerned. Most of the organizations do not have IT policies for employees. They might have HR policies, they might have other policies, incentive policies, whatever, but they don't have IT. So this is about what we call 
we are safe we are safe that is what it is if you have vpn if you have a routing table with all ports blocked only uh, only the vpn port open if you have uh, uh, if you have standard email system if you have antivirus if you are not using any pirated software and if you are employing agreements are very well done you are far better placed as far as the cyber security is concerned and you can become that particular tough nut so this is about uh, this is about what you should do to enhance your cyber security and it does not cost more. You can do all these things and by doing so, you can very well safely escape from being the target of your, of, of that particular external hacker. Now coming to the second point, you know, how much you should invest in IT. So I have derived a rule of one, two, three. So how much you should i mean every, now now we have to invest in it you know we have to buy uh, nas device we have to buy server we have to buy operating system license we have to buy autocad license we have to spend on bandwidth we have to spend on email subscription we have to spend on so many things okay so how do you make sure that as per the size of the organization are you over investing under investing or optimally investing so i have made a rule of 1 2 3 let us first see that in case you are building on-premise, you are building on-premise infrastructure in case. So what you should do is it is very simple and you can try this out. If you have done it less than that, you should spend more. If you have done more than that, you should know where you have spent, overspent it. So take the monthly payroll of entire organization. I'm not talking about labor. I'm talking about monthly payroll of computer users. So let's say, uh, if there is a factory and there are 50 people using computer and 100 people are the factory workers, you have to take the payroll of those 50 people. So monthly payroll. So let's say if that monthly payroll is 15 lakhs of rupees or 20 lakhs of rupees per month. So in next five years, if you have to invest in the IT in terms of everything, software license, ERP, hardware, computer, tablet, routers, network cables, everything. It cannot be more than two times, two to three times of your monthly payroll. So in next five years, if you are a 50, if you are a, a 50 user company in next uh, five years, everything ERP license, hardware, everything, you should not be spending uh, more than 45 lakhs of, uh, sorry, uh, if your payroll is, let's say 15 lakhs of rupees, more than 45 lakhs in all five years combined cumulatively. And on the lower side, it could be 30 lakhs. So your IT investment, capital investment should be 30 lakhs to 45 lakhs of rupees. If your payroll is 15 lakhs of rupees, if it is more, it should be more. If it is less, it is, should be less. What should be your recurring expenses? What should be your recurring expenses? Now you are also spending money on email subscription, internet bandwidth, software as a service subscription, so many things. So what for cloud services, cloud backup services, virtual servers, hosting, everything. So, and of course on IT resource salary. So it cannot be more than two to 3% of your monthly payroll. So if your monthly payroll is 20 lakhs of rupees, if your monthly payroll is 20 lakhs of rupees, it cannot be more than 40,000 to 60,000 rupees. That should include everything, your internet expense, your antivirus subscription, your maintenance, AMC, what we call your subscription to software and emails and your IT resource salary. It cannot be more than two to 3%. So how you make sure that um, your IT investment is optimum, just apply these two rules, you know, it is never late, you know. You can right now also see it. You can see where you have made uh, over investment, you have made under investment, correct it. Maybe in two to three years, you will be on the track and the IT will become, uh, you know, something, some investment which generates return, positive returns for your business. So we call it as a rule of 23, rule of 23. So, uh, I have explained uh, how much importance you should give to cybersecurity. I have logically explained why you don't have to be uh, protected like a very large enterprise. I have also explained if you follow that we are safe, you can become that tough nut. You will not uh, remain a rasgulla. Anybody can eat. And 
Then I have explained the thumb rules of optimum capex opex in information technology. What should be your optimum um, investment? So this is all about today. I think uh, we are dot on time. We are almost at four and I have completed the entire session with all the desired uh, topics. So I request Aditi to uh, launch the poll and then we will get some question and answer session. Yeah. So uh, the question was, what concerns you the most? 26% uh, uh, are concerned about return on investment in IT. 44% are effectiveness of IT systems in operational efficiency. 41% are concerned about avoidance of notional losses due to loss, leakage, and theft. And 56% are concerned about all these reasons. So uh, it was a very nice session. We will take up the uh, question answers. I think I have got some questions uh, from Mr. Shailesh Patel. What is the logic behind CapEx and OpEx investment figures? Yeah. So I'll tell you, uh, what is your CapEx? So let's say you are uh, setting up a new uh, office or factory. You will invest in wiring, cabling, uh, LAN cabling. You will invest in Wi-Fi. You will invest in routers. You will invest in network switch. You will invest in computer systems for your users. You will invest in uh, uh, operating system on those computer system. You will invest in um, hardware, server, NAS box, so many things, you know. So that is your CapEx in IT. And it should not be more than uh, two times or three times your monthly payroll for next five years. So if your monthly payroll is 15 lakhs of rupees, it cannot be more, it, it should be in the range of 30 lakhs to 45 lakhs or entire five years because in five years you keep investing in your IT so it cannot go beyond that um, yeah uh, Mr. Patel has raised the hand Aditi can we uh, activate his mic oh, yes sir Yes, you yeah, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Hello, am I audible? Very much, yes. Uh, my question is, uh, I mean, how do you come to these figures? I mean, where did you derive these figures from? Uh, see, these figures are derived uh, from my own experience. And I have dealt with 10,000 plus enterprises in my life for all CapEx, planning CapEx and OpEx. So uh, this is derived from the experience. And uh, uh, if I validate it with anything which is unknown to me, you know, like some organization who has done the investment optimum, uh, it matches with this particular figure. Okay. And uh, kindly explain me the return of return on investment of cybersecurity. I didn't understand cyber security, how, yeah. how yeah. can we so, have return on investment on cybersecurity? Correct. So basically, uh, when uh, it is cyber security is like an insurance you know uh, if uh, if you uh, provide for it and if you don't become the victim of it uh, it gives you, it has given you the return on investment just like we take in insurance and uh, in case of anything you know happens uh, we get compensated so uh, it is a very broad comparison i am not very specific about it so when you 
talk about return on investment on cyber security there are three things we have to focus one how much you have invested in cyber security and how much we are expending in cyber security against that what is the value of our data so let's say for example how you can determine the value of your data i'll give you a very small example let's say there is a manufacturing company or let's say let's say there is an architect now this particular architect has so many designers or technical people working and they're making a lot of designs. So whatever man hours have gone into that particular making the design is something, you know, uh, can be a benchmark to value that particular data. Of course, that data will have even more value than that because it will have a lot of intellectual uh, inputs inside. But let's say uh, as a benchmark, whatever man hour has gone to create that particular data. That is one type of data. Another type of data is about IPR. So whatever has happened, uh, whatever whatever resources have gone into as a, a research or development, what kind of uh, um, uh, value of that particular IPR is. And third is, uh, what if the organization does not get empaneled by a customer who wants them uh, for the cybersecurity and uh, they are not able to uh, that they are not able to get through those kind of updates and then they lose that business opportunity. So either of these three things would be determining the value expected from your digital assets for, or the value to be delivered by your cybersecurity. And then what you spend on cybersecurity and whether you are deriving that particular value or not, it will determine uh, the return on investment on your cyber security. So it is very subjective matter. It cannot be in terms of very hardcore, like I have invested in an office of 2000 square feet, let's say I've invested two crore rupees, and then I should get 3% of the return on investment if I give it on rent, something like that. It will not be like that. But every organization has to develop this scientific approach uh, that what is the value of the digital assets what happens if they are lost? What happens if they are leaked? What happens if they are not able to comply, the ex comply with the expectations of their own customers and because of that they are denied business opportunity? And what they are spending against uh, in, in, in the cybersecurity provisions and accordingly they should determine the return on investment. I hope last, I could give you better last, idea. Last question, what is the ideal uh, ROI for cybersecurity? See, uh, in my in in my rule of twenty three, I have not uh, uh, mentioned the ROI on cyber security. I have mentioned ROI on your IT. ROI on your IT. It is not about ROI on cyber security. Uh, okay. ROI... okay. I'm sorry. Uh, what is the uh, ideal uh, ROI for IT infrastructure? Yeah. So again, let's say uh, uh, ROI, ideal ideal ROI on your IT investment, as I've told you. you know, it will determine. So basically, uh, every organization has a top line, has a bottom line. Uh, IT investment is highly depreciable investment. So IT investment, when it is depreciated at normally average rate of 40%, average rate of 40%, it contributes to the uh, tax benefits for a profit-making organization. So that is one thing we have to keep in mind that when we invest in IT, of course we use it for five years, but it gets depreciated in two years on the books. So it gives us one ROI in terms of our avoidance of our tax liabilities. That is one thing which we have to consider. Another is when we are investing in IT, it cannot be more than two to three times of our payroll. Now I'll tell you how, how it works. So let's say, and, and, and this, this will have different percentage. For an architect, the payroll would be large part of his revenue. For a manufacturing company, payroll for computer user will be small part of their revenue. Again, because architect is um, dealing into very intellectual type of product, his profit margin would be higher. Again, the manufacturing company, which is dealing in a commodity or anything which is a standard product or a job work, its profitability will be lower. So when you apply that rule of 23, it will automatically match with your top line, bottom line, and it will give you an optimum uh, ROI. So I think when for five years, if you are able to use that particular IT infrastructure, and uh, for five years, if you are able to use that IT infrastructure, 
without falling victim to any data loss, leakage, or theft. Beyond cybersecurity, I'm saying, I'm just widening the scope. For five years, if you are able to use it in this particular uh, scenario, uh, your ROI would be around 14 to 15% on, on your IT investment. If you look at the depreciation, if you look at what it gets uh, by giving you operational efficiency, what it gets by giving you uh, that success in empanelment uh, for your customer or by giving you a protection and uh, making sure that you are not victim of the cybersecurity. So uh, it is very complex, I, uh, but yes, I, I hope I have given you a broad idea on that. Thank you. Yeah, any other question? We have one more question. If we have SSD hard drive, does it provide more security than traditional one? No. I don't think so. In my opinion, SSD hard drives are less reliable than uh, conventional hard drives. SSD hard drives degrade, you know, they degrade over a period of time and it has shorter lifespan than the traditional uh, hard drives. But yes, they give you very good performance because there are no moving parts. It does not require a lot of maintenance. But in my opinion, um, SSD hard drives are having lesser, shorter lifespan compared to uh, compared to SATA. And that is evident in the warranty terms. You know, when you buy an enterprise hard drive, uh, you will get five-year warranty. On SSD, you don't get five-year warranty because it degrades. Yeah, any other questions or uh, we can conclude the session? Yeah, thank you very much for your, yeah, we have one more question, two questions, one moment. Are your products pen tested? Do you have any security certification? Well, this question is uh, related to Signersoft. It is not about United SME, but yes, let me ask you, let me answer. Yes, uh, our products, are, uh, I mean, wherever it is required, they are pen tested. Otherwise, our products are mostly used behind the network. Uh, they are uh, always used behind the firewall. And uh, uh, we do not require any security certificates for our products, basically. Uh, can, we dis we, sir, Karta, can we discuss what are the three right answers of the poll? Nothing was right, nothing was wrong. It was all about the opinions of the people. There was nothing right or wrong. Uh, Mr. Kapta, data leakage by employee over internet is more threatening or over USB. I think uh, data leakage uh, by employee over internet is more threatening because you can always block the USB, but uh, you cannot block everything of the employee because let's say I'll give you an example. Uh, internet is all full of gray sites. So let's say we we think that you know we should not give access to let's say for example Dropbox to our employee, uh, but when we uh, don't give Dropbox to uh, to our employee and let's say a customer calls the employee that I have uploaded some design why don't you download it from the Dropbox? At that time employee cannot say that I don't have access to Dropbox and then organization has to give access to Dropbox and when he is given access to Dropbox he can definitely leak the data also in case he has that kind of intention. So definitely uh, data leakage over uh, internet is more difficult and challenging than data leakage over USB. You can very well control the USBs. Yeah, thank you very much for your uh, time. It was very insightful uh, discussion and I hope that you know whatever I had presented made sense to you and there was some takeaway. Yeah, thank you uh, very much. Yeah, Aditi, over to you for concluding the session, please. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir, for such a detailed and informative session. Uh, this session leaves us all with plenty of ideas, information, statistics, and visions to reflect upon. As a group of Sinosoft team, I thank everyone for attending the session. Please fill out the survey form, which you will get when the session ends, to give us your valuable feedback. Thanks again. Yeah, there is one question. 
about antivirus is best for hospital furniture and medical antivirus yeah uh, I, I don't have very specific recommendations but at sinusop we use uh, uh, mcafee thank you mr hathwale thank you very much yeah yeah Didi, we can conclude the session thank you so much for your time thank you thank you everyone